A little over four years ago, Scott Galloway, professor at NYU Stern School of Business, got a breakthrough hit with his book, The Four, The Hidden DNA of Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google, where he took a deep dive into all their business practices and strategies along with the consequences of their success to determine why they're successful. Professor Galloway also made numerous predictions about the fate and future of these companies and many more. So with four years passing and so much having changed in the world, I think it's a good time to look back at Galloway's sensational takes to see where they've gone. Scott Galloway has been a professor of marketing at New York University's Stern School of Business since 2002 and was recognized as one of the world's 50 best business school professors by Poets and Quants in 2012. He also founded a number of companies from Red Envelope, one of the earliest e-commerce sites in 1997, to L2, a digital intelligence firm in 2005 that was acquired in 2017 for $155 million. And most recently, he founded Section 4 an online education platform in 2019 with the goal to further the education of existing marketing professionals with programs like a brand marketing sprint, even though some of his peoples don't necessarily agree with all his points of views. Roblox will triple in value. This is an incredible company that actually gives a good goddamn about safety and children. It has a flywheel effect that helps people, um, helps creators. A lot of boomers um, who have never played a game in their life <laughs> will write these think pieces in the New York Times about how Roblox is like... <laughs> So innovative. And they have no idea that 90% of Roblox content is like stolen games made by children. But they love to talk up the f***ing business model. Needless to say, Galloway had found significant success even before he released The Four, which only further propelled his notoriety in the space from a podcast spot on Vox's network, a successful podcast of his own, and most recently, a host position for a new CNN show. The Four clearly had a significant impact on Galloway's life, but he clearly wasn't the only one impacted. Anyone who read this New York Times bestseller had a brand new understanding of these four Goliaths and never looked at them the same way again. I can say personally that the course of my life changed dramatically after I was recommended and read this book. His insightful and unique takes on these giants forced me to think in a different way that I never had before. Through my time at college, I recommended this book to any and everyone I could because I truly think of it as a transformative piece of literature. This gives me a perfect opportunity to rip the rose-colored glasses off and give an honest retrospective to what I believe is the most powerful book I've ever read. Okay. The second most powerful book I've ever read. No, no. That's the same guy. Wrong book. Okay, that's the one. I want to look at how the four have changed over the past four years. How they've grown, declined, and evolved from how we knew them in 2017 to how we see them now. If we look at how the four's market cap has grown, it's pretty clear they've all done very well for themselves since the book was released. But that can be expected from any multi-billion dollar company on the forefront of innovation. The interesting part is how they've been able to do it. Amazon has seen surprisingly tremendous growth over the past four years, considering how huge they were in 2017. Just a few of their accomplishments would include record-breaking Black Friday sales every year for the past four years, winning a streaming war, becoming competitive in a streaming war, and developing their own robust delivery service. Now you may ask, what did all of this cost Amazon? Everything. The past four years haven't exactly been great for Amazon's public image. Between workers being mistreated, mass walkouts, and unprecedented turnover rates, Amazon has been paying the bills for all their success with the blood, sweat, and occasionally the urine of their workers. To Amazon, these are mere growing pains, because no matter how much we don't want it to be true, the average consumer doesn't care that someone else is suffering as long as their package is on the doorstep within 24 hours. Galloway made a few bold predictions regarding Amazon and their impact on the broader retail industry. The first of those predictions was that Walmart would be the biggest loser to Amazon's success, which seems to flop. As not only have they seen significant growth in the past four years, but the catalyst of COVID, which supercharged Amazon's growth, seemed to have little effect on the mega retailer. The next bold prediction Galloway made was that Amazon would be the first company to hit a trillion dollar market cap, a prediction that didn't age too well, as one of the other four took that title, a little company known by the name of Apple. Apple truly broke out among the four as the one who came to play. Not only were they the first company in the world to hit a trillion dollar market cap, but they are the first to hit a two trillion dollar market cap. And by the looks of it, they'll probably be the first to hit a three trillion dollar market cap. The most shocking thing about all this is that they really haven't grown much from the Apple we knew four years ago. In The Four, Scott Galloway clearly outlines what is setting Apple so far apart from their competitors. What it comes down to is perception. Apple had insane growth because they were charging for the margins of a Lamborghini, but producing and selling at the rate of a Toyota Corolla. And they were allowed to do it because of the strong marketing Apple built their company on, as well as the ongoing walled garden effect, where people who have been worked into the Apple ecosystem are now too afraid to leave because much of their life and social status are tied up with the Apple logo. Beyond consistent software and hardware upgrades, not much has changed about the Apple of old, which is exactly why people keep coming back to the garden. 
Facebook, on the other hand, said, screw the garden, we're knocking down the walls and building the Megadome. Their ambitious growth strategy involving the integration of their Oculus acquisition into creating the metaverse can only be characterized as a long-term play. They don't want the leg, they want the whole darn turkey of online social spaces. Galloway surmised that Facebook may be the most successful thing in the history of humankind, but that isn't enough for them. They want more. While they have made significant advancements in their technology and algorithms, they still clearly lack the necessary security that would allow people to put their complete online existence in Facebook's hands. I feel the greatest thing holding Facebook back from that elusive existence in a lot of ways is their success, and can be brought back to Galloway's concerns over their abdication of social responsibility. Since Facebook stands for nothing, I fear no one will want to stand with them. The possibility that my virtual life can be taken over by hostile actors while Zuckerberg stands there with his hands in the air saying, nothing I can do, we're just a platform, makes me hesitant to allow any more of my life to intersect with Facebook at all. On the opposite side of the spectrum, however, sits Google. I'm seemingly happy to devote more and more of my attention to them as a platform in their services. Galloway predicted that Google would continue to grow as a truly unmatched solution for our search for knowledge. In this case, he could not have been more spot on. Google's growth has been impressively significant and the feats they've been able to achieve are remarkable. Starting with YouTube, they've been able to grow the platform significantly in the era of the online creator. This is majorly highlighted in their effort to further develop their live streaming platform in YouTube gaming, to compete with the big dog that is Twitch to take away their market share and strategically acquire top talent to siphon users onto the platform. To pair with those efforts, they released Stadia in 2018, which is a cloud gaming service that allows you to stream games. This shows their vision and belief in the game market and its ability to grow in the coming future. Lastly, they've been acquiring a number of wearable technology companies, from North, a smart glasses company for $180 million, to Dysonics, an audio hardware company. Oh, and did I mention their $2.1 billion acquisition of Fitbit in the wearable space as well? Their growth in not only their core competencies, but into new business ventures gives us a great signal to their willingness to settle for their current status as a modern-day god. Galloway also made a number of predictions regarding who he believed would become the fifth horseman. While I truly believe the fifth horseman position is yet to be filled, they're still worth giving a look. The first contender he brought up was Alibaba. Galloway mentioned that his major fear with Alibaba was their ties and entanglement with the Chinese Communist government. I think those fears were ultimately well-founded and are the same reason that much like Jack Ma, Alibaba is going to disappear from the fifth horseman contention. Tesla was his next horseman in contention. I think it's fair to say that of the contenders, Tesla has seen the most growth from 2017. Tesla's major issues with being overvalued and most of the company's value coming from hype still exist even while they up production to fight the problem. While Galloway may not be super psyched that Elon Musk is Time's Person of the Year, it's fair to say that Tesla has laid the way for the future of electric cars. But that's it. While they lay the way, the big players like Ford are starting to catch up, and surely in a couple of years will surpass the technology advantage Tesla has held. As they attempt to pivot to different competitive advantages like self-driving AI technology, every other car manufacturer is looking at the EV market as a more and more promising proposition for the future of their business, which makes it incredibly difficult to surmise that Tesla will become the fifth horseman anytime soon. After Tesla, Galloway talks about how Uber could be a contender because they have access to an insane amount of visionary capital. But unfortunately for Uber, they haven't been able to do much with it because of COVID, and thus have fallen into a stagnant innovationless state. The Uber we knew in 2017 is the same Uber as we know now, plus a few lawsuits and regional challenges. With all that being said, I couldn't possibly, in good faith, consider Uber a legitimate contender for the fifth horseman position. Airbnb was another business that seemed like it had a chance to contend for the position, but other than a wildly successful IPO, they are in a very similar position to Uber and have been severely stunted thanks to COVID and can't truly be considered a contender. All the next plausible fifth horseman Galloway discusses, I would put into the old guard category. Companies that were once major forces and had a great potential to come back and disrupt enough to again be considered a horseman. These old guards are Walmart, Microsoft, IBM, and Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, Time Warner. While it's easy to brush all these mega corporations off as beyond their time, since none of them have truly captured the potential Galloway outlined for them in the book, it is worth noting that these companies still hold a significant amount of power and influence in our lives. So although I don't believe these four are any closer to becoming one of the four from their positions in 2017, I think they are more than happy with their statuses as extremely powerful mega corporations. Now that I've taken a walk down memory lane for the four as well as the potential fifth horseman, I think I'm ready to make my assertion of who the fifth horseman will be. To me, the only company that has come up and been part of the cultural zeitgeist like Facebook, Amazon, Google, or Apple in the past couple of years has to be ByteDance and their mega hit, TikTok. While they are in a similar position as far as potential problems with the Chinese government as Alibaba, they have been able to speed run to 1 billion users faster than any of their predecessors just five years compared to Facebook's eight-year journey. They also hold the attention of a key demographic that Facebook seems to no longer be able to reach, young people. This makes them a prime fit for the fifth horseman position and my bet for who should be considered next up. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks so much for sticking around. And if you haven't read Scott Galloway's The Four, I highly recommend it along with the other two books he's released since then. 
Do you think I'm way off on ByteDance and TikTok being next up? Who do you think is the next horseman? Make sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Other than that, I'm Reed, and those have been my thoughts. Thanks for watching.